What up, cucks? I'm back once again, and now we're going to talk about a subject, but we're not going to talk about it much, but we're going to talk about a subject that's near and dear to everyone's hearts, right? And that subject is Brock Lesnar, motherfuckers, and why he rules. This won't be a 25 reasons, right? Because I'm just going to talk generally about a lot of things uh, that make Brock Lesnar Brock Lesnar, right? But not, but not particularly reasons, because I don't think you need reasons. At least, maybe, maybe one day I'll make a 25 reasons why Brock rules. But uh, you don't really need reasons why Brock Lesnar rules. Like, I think everyone can agree that Brock Lesnar fucking is fucking awesome, right? All right. So let's start at the beginning, right? Brock Lesnar debuted at a time when WWE really needed a star. You know, uh, Stone Cold had just left, basically. The Rock was on his way out, motherfucks. So they needed someone, right? And they understood that Triple H is good. But they really need a new young guy who can lead us into the future. And they made a mistake that they didn't make again until arguably with Cena. But they let Brock Lesnar become too big. It's as simple as that, right? They, they debuted him in a very emphatic way. It was like some, some hardcore battle royal, right, for the, for the hardcore title, which had a 24-7 rule uh, in that some bitch. So imagine, like, when R-Truth and Mojo Rawley are wrestling, imagine, like, I don't know, King debuting or something like that. It was sick, right? So he just destroyed like Maven, Spike Dudley, and Al Snow. He just whooped their ass, right? And with Paul Heyman. And JR was like, at, at his peak at the time, and JR was like, oh my God, who is this guy? And what's he, what's he doing with that bastard Paul Heyman, right? And then Paul Heyman was like, get him, get him, right? So immediately he was skyrocketed to the top, right? He was drafted really early, like at number five or something, in like the first ever WWE draft by uh, Ric Flair, Ferraro. Then he won the WWE title from The Rock, and he signed an exclusive contract with SmackDown, which I automatically thought when, when he went to SmackDown, I was like, oh, they're going to start some sort of like bullshit, bullshit storyline where he's just going to SmackDown, but he's not going to stay there. He's too big for SmackDown. No, motherfucks. He stayed there, and he made SmackDown. The only time SmackDown has ever been the A-show was when Brock Lesnar was on SmackDown and he was a champion. Because he had incredible matches and feuds with people like Kurt Angle, and then later like Eddie Guerrero, Benoit, uh, Big Show. It was incredible, right? I don't even have to talk about that too much. We all know, right? Um, then, right, Brock Lesnar left. And the fans, probably like the very beginning of the, of the I wouldn't say the smart revolution, right? But like when Brock Lesnar and Goldberg had their match at WrestleMania, the fans were booing them both because they were both leaving. And then Stone Cold gave them the stunners. And they cheered Stone Cold because everybody loves Stone Cold. Now, Brock Lesnar left. He went to New Japan, became champion there in about 35 seconds, right? Because obviously he became champion there, right? Then he went to UFC eventually and became the world heavyweight champion and then started losing only when he had like diverticulitis and he was like pretty much dying from the inside out, right? And now he's back, you know, juiced to the gills like Mark Hunt said. And that guy could beat up anyone in this world, you know? I mean... I'm sure there's like people that could beat him up, but there's very few of them. Brock Lesnar is as legit as they come, you know? And this idea, oh, Cain Velasquez destroyed him. Right now, Brock Lesnar would destroy Cain Velasquez. He would, he would tear him apart if he wanted to, right? I think, honestly, Brock Lesnar, if he went to the UFC today, he would have like a real good shot against uh, Stipe Miocic uh, for the title. I, he would have a shot. I mean, Stipe might beat him because like he's an active fighter, you know, or Cormier might beat him because he's an active fighter. But these, like when, when the... The, the potential was announced. They were saying like, oh, Daniel Cormier wins by knockout in the first round. I'm just like, dude, like, I, I like Daniel Cormier as much as, as much as the next guy. But there's no way that Brock Lesnar is the underdog in anything, man. He's Brock Lesnar, but what? <laughs> so anyways, uh, now, now that we talked about the history a little bit, let's talk about instances of Brock Lesnar being awesome, right? Number one, WrestleMania match. He went for the shooting star press. He fucked it up, but he tried, you know? And it's impressive when he does it. It's not impressive when a beta male like Ricochet does it. It's impressive when a guy, and it tells a story, right? Because it's like this monster of a human has to resort to a shooting star press in order to, like, hit Kurt Angle with it and win the match, you understand me? So there's that. Two, he became the youngest champion until Randy Orton surpassed him, which he only did by leaving, right? That's another highlight of Brock Lesnar's career. Three, Beyond being the number one champion, I mean the, the youngest champion, he beat The Rock to become the youngest champion. Uh, four, he main evented WrestleMania after winning the Royal Rumble, the first time he was like eligible to try. Then he fucking went on 
and destroyed Cena in what essentially was the last real match of Cena's career, right? When, when, when Brock Lesnar, like, just squashed Cena that one time when he suplexed him, like, a million times, that was the beginning of the end for Cena. That's when Cena started going part-time. So, if anything, I'd, I'd put that on Brock Lesnar, motherfucks. Then, he beat the streak. He ended Undertaker's streak. Then he became champion for about three years. And then he had the best performance at one of the best Royal Rumbles of all time. So now you tell me, motherfuckers, you tell me how anyone can say Brock Lesnar sucks. What does he have to do? Now, I understand now that he's, his character and his real life persona is that of a guy who doesn't give a rat's ass. That he does fewer moves than before. But that's kind of his thing, right? When he suplexes you, people start counting, right? He doesn't do a lot of moves because he now has to do suplexes to continue his suplex city uh, thing, right? He made, he put suplex city over just by saying it once. That's how cool Brock Lesnar is. You know? Samoa Joe, on the other hand, tried to say the word asshat twice. No one gave a fuck because he doesn't have the presence and charisma of Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, a lot of people are like, oh, he's not charismatic. Brock, Brock Lesnar is very charismatic. Because Brock Lesnar can come in, say nothing, have Paul Heyman talk for him, and you don't give a shit about what Paul Heyman is saying. Like, Paul Heyman only works because he has Brock Lesnar. Because all the other Heyman guys, right, have failed completely, right? Cesaro can't talk for shit, no one cares. He's, he's, he's a nothing, right? Curtis Axel, he's a nothing. The, like, it, it got to the point where people really thought that Paul Heyman was the one making these people into stars. But Paul Heyman has made no one into a star. Brock Lesnar is the star. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Paul Heyman sucks. You know, he's good at what he does, don't get me wrong. But you, he, 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 he's, like, he does, he's not this magical guy that people are like, I'll put him with Paul Heyman. So like, like a long time ago, I put a comment on some videos. Like Cesaro should be with Paul Heyman. This is when I was a fool, right? Uh, like two years later, they put Cesaro with Heyman, right? And that comment... I got all these email notifications about the comment I wrote two years ago. People are like, oh, dude, you were totally right. Now Cesaro's going to be a, like a main eventer. At this point, I'd wise up to it, motherfucks. And I'm like, oh, no way. It's not going to work. Because Paul Heyman sucks now. Paul Heyman only works with Brock Lesnar. Because Brock Lesnar carries the weight. Brock Lesnar has that Brock Lesnar charisma. That silent charisma where he just stands there looking menacing, right? And he can also be funny as shit. You know, during the Royal Rumble, he was laughing at things that were... That were funny. He was making hilarious moments. He started dancing when, like, I think it was either Kofi or Big E. He started dancing to the, the New Day theme, I think it was. I think it was Kofi or Big E. I think it was the New Day theme. That's how I remember it. He was dancing to, to the, the New Day theme, I think. Yeah. Or maybe, like, Morrison or something. I don't know. He was dancing to someone's theme. Right? Um, then uh, he had the little boombox thing. The Brock party, motherfuckers. The Brock party. When he had the money in the bank and carried it. Oh, that's another thing he did. He won the money in the bank. Uh, and King of the Ring. So, he had, like, the, the boombox, and he started, like, shuffling his feet in the ring. It was great. Brock Lesnar's just great. And, recently, there was a point where Paul Heyman started saying something, and he started booing, and Brock Lesnar just left. And Paul Heyman just followed him. You could tell that that was, like, in my opinion, not planned at all, right? Brock Lesnar was like, I'm just gonna play this by ear, we're leaving. Paul Heyman picked up on it, and they left, right? Like, they left in protest, like, we don't have to deal with you, like, this is Brock Lesnar, he doesn't have to, like, worry about your bitch asses, right? So, Brock Lesnar is just awesome, right? He, he is... Like, the best, honestly, one of the best wrestlers of all time. Um, he doesn't get the credit he deserves because he's part-time. But of course he's part-time, motherfucks. Of course he's part-time. Why would he wrestle all the time? That would ruin his mystique. And people are like, oh, it's, it's already ruined. No, it's not ruined. It's not, it's, it's not ruined. Because I want to see Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre. I would not want to see Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman. I don't give a fuck who wins that match. You understand what I'm saying? Cucks. You understand me? Also, that's another thing. Braun Strowman was beating up Lashley, Corbin... And Drew McIntyre. And all of a sudden now Drew is a face. And he's like positioned higher than Braun Strowman. It is what it is. But um, yeah, motherfuckers. Brock Lesnar. Right? Sorry, the video played for a second there. Kicks! <laughs> but um, yeah. Brock Lesnar brings in viewers. Because Brock Lesnar is fucking awesome. And if you don't think Brock Lesnar is awesome. Then you need to ask yourself this. Which will be a good segue to the next video. Because uh, this was almost over, cucks. But ask yourself this. What's wrong with Brock Lesnar being part-time? Now, I, I not part-time like every three months, but part-time like he's been for the last few months, right? 
where he shows up with Paul Heyman. He'll kick someone in the balls. He'll do an occasional F5. That kind of shit. Like, like part-time how he's been this year, basically. Right? Like, since the whole Dominic Mysterio thing, right? That was great. Like, what's wrong with that? Everyone in New Japan is part-time. None of those fucks are on TV every week. I don't think, at least. Right? I had New Japan World for a little bit. There was, there was like, entire months when New Japan does nothing. Like, they don't produce, like, wrestling, right? These, these motherfuckers like Okada are just hanging out. Eating... Eating burgers and shit, you know? Working on his skinny fat ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not doing anything. So Brock Lesnar does the same thing. And oh, he's a part-timer. Yeah, Kenny Omega's a part-timer. That's why they put on, like, one-hour matches. Because they put on one-hour matches, like, seven times a year. And people are like, oh, that's great. Meanwhile, Seth Rollins wrestles, like, 300 times a year. Oh, boo! Seth Rollins overrated. Get the fuck out of here, you know what I'm saying? That's the problem. Cuss! <laughs> so anyways, I hope that Brock Lesnar becomes champion. I mean, he already is. But once Drew beats him, I hope he becomes champion really soon. Uh, maybe on the other show or something. I don't, I don't care. Right? But I want to see Brock Lesnar continue to be what he is until he retires, motherfuckers. I love Brock Lesnar. You know? And uh, just consider the fact that he can come back and he still feels like a star. Right? He really, aside from the fact that he was a UFC champion, which is not really that important in, in the greater scheme of things, uh, he felt like a star. It felt like a big deal, you know, because he was booked so strongly at WWE because they knew what they had on their hands, right? And since him, it's been arguably only Cena that has gotten that kind of push. And, 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 and guess what? Cena left for the Hollywood too, right? The same way. They all leave. The stars always leave. That's why WWE doesn't want to make that many stars, you know? They have to like... And John Cena, to his credit, he left. But he, he put in like, uh, on, on, what, 15 years? You know, of wrestling, and he still comes around once in a while, right? So he he did his he did his job, you know. So there you go, motherfuckers. Brock Lesnar is one of the best wrestlers in the world, and if you don't like that, you can blow him. You understand what I'm saying? Damn. <laughs>